Welcome to another Tuesday Night Live. Today is Tuesday, February 15th, 2022. If you're watching this on the replay, I would ask that you like and share anything you see tonight. And then we're going to see if we can get on here. See who's on. There we go. All right. And why do I keep getting this stupid? <clears throat> All right. Come on. There we go. Hello. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Lynette. So glad you could join me. Okay. Tonight. We will be using the um, Daffodil Afternoon Designer Series paper. I don't know why I keep thinking it's Daffodil Daydream. Um, this is a celebration free item. And these are all the patterns that you will find in this pack. And this is free through the end of February. Uh, 2022 with a $50 qualifying purchase, you could choose this paper. And I went ahead and cut all these. I cut one sheet of each pattern down to four by five and a quarter so that I could just throw it on the card front. And then I left the rest of my pieces whole in case I want to use them on a 3D project or something. So we'll be using this paper tonight. This is our focus. And then um, we're going to be using the Daffodil Daydream stamp set and the Daffodil dies. Uh, there are 24 dies in this Daffodil Daydream. I split mine onto two cards, which I just did this evening. Because what a mess. I had them all on one magnet sheet and they were so tight that as soon as you took more than one off, you couldn't figure out how to get them back on. So I found when I was working with these that it was best to separate them. So everything that's on this half of the magnet card has a coordinating detailed piece on this side of the magnet card. <clears throat> Okay, so these are like the base pieces and these are your detail pieces. And then these two in the middle, um, these are the bud and this is the background piece and this is the detail piece. On this side, these two pieces uh, cut out these images in the stamp set. This butterfly will cut out this butterfly in the stamp set. And then this piece will give you a smaller butterfly, which you can use separately, or you could stack it on top of this butterfly. And then you have a little butterfly body so that you could cut that out in a different color, right? These are your stems and these are your leaves. And I just have them um, upside down. And in order to cut them, and save paper, I used a piece of post-it note to stick them together so that I could easily just put them down on my paper, not have them move. And, and if yours bend a little bit like mine did, just gently um, give that a press and they'll go back flat. And I found that was the easiest way to cut them. Okay, so you will find uh, this bundle in the January to June mini catalog, and it's on page 37, right there. So you can buy the stamp set separately, you could buy the dies separately, or if you buy them in the bundle, you save 10%. And when you purchase this bundle, then you can get the Daffodil Afternoon Designer Series paper free. Oh, but only through the end of February. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside for now. 
because we aren't going to use these on our first project. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. Man, I got to working with this bundle of products and I kind of went a little crazy. So I, um, I'm going to show you some cards that we may not necessarily make here. But I'm going to try it. Some of them, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the partial card, show you the stuff, and then I'll show you what the finished card looks like just so we can save some time. Okay? So this is the first card that we're going to make. And I've done a lot of stuff um, ahead of time. So this, thanks, comes from a retired set of well-written dies. And if... Um, you don't have that in your stash already. There is a die set called Amazing Thanks that's in the same January to June mini catalog that you could use on this project as well. I just don't have it because I have that already in my stash and I didn't feel like I needed to do two. So this particular die cut comes from the Encircled in Beauty friendship die, or Encircled in Beauty dies. So I've cut that in Flirty Flamingo. That you can find that in the annual catalog. Our card base is a standard A2 card base, and this is um, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And I've already stamped the inside. This piece is basic white, and it is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And this image comes from that Daffodil Daydream stamp set. I've colored with the light mossy meadow stamp and blend, the dark daffodil delight, and the light flirty flamingo. Okay, so we've got that. And we're going to set that aside. <clears throat> now, what I wanted to show you with this particular card, let me set all that aside, is that I did partial die cutting. Okay, so I'm going to show you that I've already colored my image. And I'm going to get the, I think it's this largest die. Let me double check that. Yep, it's the largest die here. And I'm just going to set this circle here. So I want to catch the top of my leaves. Okay. So I'm going to get that. And then I'm going to uh, grab the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And if you cut your paper a little smaller, you could do this on the mini, but my paper is too large because I wanted to make sure that I had everything like I needed it. So I'm gonna put platform one, platform two, platform three, and then I'm going to put my die in here like this. And you guys can see that. Good. Good, good, good. All right. And then I'm going to grab a small piece of post-it tape because I don't want this to move. And I'm just going to put that right there. And then I do not want to cut off my stems. So I'm going to put my top plate number three just down at the bottom so it won't cut all the way but it so can you see that let me see let me see if i can move that up so you can see what i've done okay so my, here's the rest of my image and I, my top plate only goes to here so my die then will only cut to here and then i'm going to roll that on through Now we're done with the cut and emboss machine. So we'll set that aside. And then we'll pull this off. And you'll see that I'm not fully cut. So then I'm going to take my paper snips. Okay. Okay. 
and I'm going to follow that line up to my stems and, and then I'm going to cut down and around and then I'm going to go back to this side and I'm going to follow the line of that circle back to my stem and now I have this so I still have my circle like I wanted, but I extended it. So I have an extended die cut. Kind of a cool little technique. And you can do this with any of your shaped dies or whatever. You just have to do a partial cut and then you're good. Okay, so we need the light mint macaron marker here, Stampin' Blend. And I want this image to pop off the page a little. So I'm going to take my light mint macaron here. And I'm going to go around the outside edge of my daffodils. Just to make it stand off the page a bit. You can do this with any image when you're not putting a layer behind it to make it look as if you do have a layer. And I chose the mint macaron because this is in the um, designer series paper that we're using so it will coordinate beautifully. You can do this with any of your lighter Stampin' Blend markers. Just give it a real light hand. Puts the shadow in there. And really gives it a nice finish. And don't forget to go to the inside of your image. Okay. Now when that dries, it'll dry a little lighter. And if you're concerned about how dark it is, you can always go back with your color lifter and lighten and blend that out a bit. Okay, it doesn't take that long, but it does have a very large impact. Okay. Now, of course, I couldn't just let that go there. We're going to take our card base, We're going to add our designer series paper to the card base, and then we'll add our um, pieces here. Ahead of time, I've taken the um, Crinkled seam binding ribbon in white, and I took my dark flirty flamingo marker and I colored that and then tied it into a bow, and that's going to go here. And then I've taken and stamped on basic white again uh, this daffodil, but I only inked up this side of my stamp inked it up and I used my stamping blends to color those and put a little wink of Stella on them. And then with these two little flowers, I'm going to put a little glue dot. I'm going to roll up a glue dot. I'm going to put that at the end, at the base of my flower petals okay so I've got those ready 
then we're going to take a couple of mini dimensionals. And so I've got my glue dot on the bottom, my mini at the top, and then I'm going to set that down. Give that glue dot a good press, and then that will pop up my flower center. So again, glue dot with the mini dimensional. I made sure when I cut these out that I cut right on the black line. Okay, so I've got that. I'm going to add my thanks to the top of my card. And there is the finished product. Does anybody have any questions? I see there are five people on, and I only have two comments. So when you're Come on, go ahead and give me a comment. Let me know you're here so I can say hello. All right. And then for the envelope for these cards, I stamped the other daffodil image and put that on the envelope. Took another piece of that designer series paper. I used the reverse side and put that on the envelope flap so that we have a nice piece of stationery. Okay, you had to refresh. Okay, let me refresh Tracy and see what happens. All right, there I see Laura, Jennifer, Cynthia. Hello, ladies. Yeah, for some reason, um, that's not, Facebook is not letting me see my comments tonight. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that card. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. I'm glad you liked that. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next card. Oh, actually, I forgot one thing that I had put on here. Um, let me grab those so you can see them. I took and added one of our little bumblebee trinkets. Let's get that done so I don't forget it. I'm just going to take a couple of glue dots. I'm going to grab my take your pick tool. And I'm going to use two because this trinket is a little on the heavier side. And I want to make sure it's going to stick. And then I'm just going to place that little bee right there. Okay. All right. So there we have it. All right. So I also made, I just wanted to show you this one. I also made this one just a little bit different. With this one, I took, I, um, I just cut a circle. I didn't do the extended. And I pre-inked this, and then I didn't like how it turned out so much. So I had to stamp and cut everything out and put over the top. But there's that card in a different colorway. And done just a little bit differently. All right. Okay, so let's set those ones aside. All right, for our next project, let me get these. I'm going to need those again, so I'm not going to put those away. All right, so our next card 
starts with Daffodil Delight. And again, I'm going to use that, a piece of that Daffodil Afternoon paper. And this one I did not pre-do a ton of, so. <clears throat> We're going to ink up our large Maybe this is this one that I had here. Yep, this is the right size. Okay. So we're going to ink that up. And I'm going to stamp that down. I'm just going to set it there and give it a good press. All right. And then we're going to take Daffodil Delight, the Light Evening Evergreen. And these are the only colors I'm using for this. I kept this one pretty simple. I'm gonna go ahead and just use my um, card mat, which is Flirty Flamingo. Let me tell you what size this is. This is cut at three by four. So this is three and an eighth by four and an eighth. And I'm just gonna set this on here and that will keep my blend from blending through to my mat and I did not do any fancy coloring on here I'm just going to do some basic quick coloring we'll just color in these leaves And I prefer the bullet tip as I find I have better control. And on this bud, you want to be kind of careful because it goes at a little bit of an angle. So those are almost finished. You can see how quick the coloring, oops, the coloring can be. I will fix that with my color lifter. I'm just going to go ahead and run this right off the paper. Like so. I'll grab the color lifter and we'll push that color back. Okay. All right, then for the daffodil leaves here, I did not fully color these. I'm just going to put some dark along these artist lines on my front, on my lower petals. And then I put just, a, I'm still with the dark. I'm just going to put just a little bit of dark in the center here. And then I'm going to take my light daffodil delight. And I'm going to blend that together. I'm going to put just a little bit of dark under this where the petals meet, where there will be a little bit of shadow. And then I'm going to repeat that over here. Okay. 
Okay, and then we're gonna All right, and that is our image. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put just a little bit more color on there, bud. All right. So that is that. Then we're gonna take our, um, this is a little speckle stamp that comes in that same stamp set. I'm going to ink this up and I'm just going to put some sprays across this like so. Then I'm going to take the Easter Blessings, which is in that stamp set, which I thought I had out. Let me look because it might not be so. Nope. Apparently, I'll put it back. That's not going to fit on that block. All right, so let's line this up on a straight line on a grid paper. Ink that up. Make sure it's going to stamp how I want it to. And I'm going to put this right down here in the corner, like so. Okay, then I'm just going to put these two together. Where did I set my, there it is. We'll put this on our flirty flamingo. Now we're going to pop this. Oh, I didn't get that very straight. Okay. Let's give that a twist off. And then we'll re reevaluate that try to get that a little bit better and we're going to add this to our card front give that a good burnish with our bone folder This on. Let me get that out of the way. So it keeps turning on me. Well, let's make sure we put our daffodils right side up, shall we? This is a directional pattern, so we'll make sure we get that right side up. And again, we're going to take some Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm at the end of my back here. So we're just going to put some of those end pieces. Yeah, I didn't cut enough. All right, and then I always want to put some in the center for stability. We'll remove all those backings. this to our card front 
and apparently I did not. I thought I did. Well, let's do it because I apparently forgot to get that. I thought I had him already all my. I must have lost it when I dumped out my package. Does that ever happen to you guys? I had a bow ready to go, I thought. So we're going to take that. Oh, maybe it's in this one. Oh, yeah. Here, let's just use this one. All right, so we're going to take this the glue dot. And we'll add that right here. And I'm going to trim that up so it doesn't cover up our, and there is the second card. That one's pretty simple. Okay. And then for the inside, I've taken the sending Easter wishes to someone very sweet comes from the A Wish for Everything stamp set that you will find in the annual catalog. And so let's take that. And I've colored the butterfly in Flirty Flamingo and Dark Daffodil Delight. And stamp that same speckle image in the evening evergreen at the bottom. And then there we have that. That card. Ready to go. And for the envelope, I've done the, or the, on the back of the envelope, I put that same um, designer service paper. Okay. All right, so let's get these cleaned up a little bit, and we will we'll move on to the more um, time-consuming card. I'm going to show you how to use the daffodil dies. Oh, thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Laura. So glad you guys like that. I really, I, I got started on this stamp set and I just kind of went a little crazy. Um, Laura had asked, she didn't have the daffodils set and she had asked me to do some projects to show her how to use the paper without um, the daffodils. So we're going to do that too. All right, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. And we don't need this. All right, so that puts, that cleans up a little bit of my mess. All right, and let's get this tray out of the way. And bring in the tray that we need. Okay. So we're going to be using some different um, things with this next card and just so you'll know I used a couple of different stamp sets for the sentiments but if you don't have those particular stamp sets then you can um, use whatever you have on hand okay so we're gonna start with a uh, base of evening evergreen five and a half by eight and a half and we're going to score that in half at four and a quarter all right so we've got that piece and then i've taken a piece of pear pizzazz that is four by five and a quarter and I've used the stitched greenery die 
And when you run this piece through your um, die cutting machine, you can do it however you want, but this is how I did mine. And I've already done it, but I'm gonna show you the sandwich that I used. So what I did was I put my top plate on the bottom that I usually use for my top plate. I put it on the bottom. Then I put the die down. And then I put my cardstock face down. Put my actual cutting plate, the one that I usually cut on. And then I ran it through. Okay. And then I got this. Let me get this out of the way again. I just wanted to show you that sandwich. Okay, so then this is what you get when you um, do that, and that is just beautiful. It doesn't actually, it doesn't cut. So whether you call it a die or an embossing folder, I don't know. But this then, we can go ahead and we're gonna um, start building our daffodils on here, okay? So I've already cut all the pieces. And I cut the pieces, my stems and leaves, are cut from the New Horizons Designer Series paper. Is that what it's called? Yep, New Horizons. That's this fabulous set of paper. There's one of these papers in here that is pretty much all green, this one right here. And that's what I use for my stems and my leaves. Okay, so I cut it out of that. Then my daffodils, I cut out of the Simply Marvelous paper and I used the So Saffron and Daffodil Delight sheet and I cut my detailed images from the satin looking side and my um, base layer pieces from this side of the paper. It won't take a full sheet. Um, but you can, if you just cut all the detail or all of the base layers first and then cut all of the, then flip your paper and cut all the details next, then you'll have all these pieces. Okay. So we've got, I just, I cut a bunch of stems and a bunch of leaves. And then we've got our base layer pieces. Now, for for the different flowers that you can build. You can build a flower like this, which is a side flower, or you can build a main flower, which that's gonna take, um, how would I set those dies? You need one of the main, okay, let's grab these. Okay, so you need one of these. two of these and remember I cut these from that more marbled look inside and then you need and these pieces here are going to make one flower okay then you're gonna need this piece and another one of those daffodils and you need this piece. I guess it goes this way. Okay. So you're going to cut those all on the so saffron marbled side. Okay. <clears throat> then you're going to turn your paper over. You're going to cut one of these. Or two of these actually, because these are the same, but they give you two dies. You're going to cut two of these because you need one for each flower. And 
and then you're going to need this flower center piece and one of these i call them the helicopter pieces because they look like kind of like helicopter wings to me okay so that will give you two flowers. If you cut one of every, each one of those, that's going to give you two flowers. Okay. And these three pieces and these three pieces are going to go on top of each other. These three pieces and these three pieces are going to go on, on top of each other to make a second flower. Okay. I hope I'm explaining this well enough. Okay. So remember, these are going to go with this, and this is going to go with this. Am I out of the frame? Can you see? Boop. So there's those three pieces that I said would make one flower. And then we have these three pieces that are the base pieces. And then they each get a detailed piece with them as well. Now there is this one little die here. Um, I think that's supposed to be a flower center. And I cut it. And it's in my, oh no, it's right here. I cut it. But I'm not quite sure where you're supposed to put it. And if you're supposed to put it where I think you're supposed to put it. Um, I didn't like the way it looked. So I think you're supposed to put this in here like so. But I'm not keen on that. So I'm not using it. Okay. Let's move these dies out of the way. Okay. So I'm going to start by putting in my, okay, so the way I did this first was I'm going to build on my silicone mat, and I'm going to put down a stem, and I'm going to build my, um, my largest flower first. So that will be these pieces right here. Okay, so I'm going to build this one first, and I'm going to take one stem and then a couple of the leaves i'm going to put my stems down first and i'm going to i'm going to use liquid glue so i'm going to figure out where i want these to line up here and i'm going to put a little little bit of glue and i want a lot Okay, and I'm just going to put this down a bit, like so. And this one, I am going to just put a little bit of glue here. Because I can always go back and add glue later if I need to. But I probably won't need to. Because really the idea is just to get these three stuck together. Okay. And then I'm going to move these over here. Well, let's set that there for a minute while we build our flower. So you could cut these with our adhesive sheets. But I found a little bit of glue. You've got some big enough areas really to use the Tombow. And it is designer series paper, so it really doesn't take a lot. And if you think you got too much in one spot or you have a real tiny spot you're worried about, use the glue that's already on your piece and the tip of your glue bottle just to put the tiny little amount that you need. Okay, and then we're going to just put this down. All right, so that's built. Now, the tip for these three petals is to look for the shortest petal here. I think that's the one. And 
the shortest petal here and then when you lay these down they'll line up perfectly okay so shortest these two are a little bit longer these two are a little bit longer this is the shortest So I'm just going to take a little bit of liquid glue and then I'm going to use the tip of my glue bottle to move that around so that I don't end up with globs everywhere. And then I'll line that up, the little petal to the little petal, and they will line up perfectly. And we'll do that the second time. Again, I'm looking for that short little petal here, right here, and the short little petal here. And I'm not worrying if I get glue all the way to the tips because if I don't, that gives my flower a little bit of extra depth and dimension because it's not going to sit perfectly flat. Then I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to put on the top of the other. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the center. And I probably should be working on my silicone mat because that would be the smart thing to do. And then I'm going to just put those two together like so. Okay, and then I'm ready to add my flower. Now again with this, I'm gonna take a glue dot which I didn't put back in the box. And I'm going to put a glue dot at the bottom. And a Stampin' Dimensional at the top. And I'm going to add this. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. You do it how you want to do it. And there's my first flower petal. Now this is ready to go on here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the tip of my stem. And I'm just going to lay that down like so and give it a press. And now I have one whole piece that I can take and move to my base layer here. I'm gonna end up cutting some of this off. So again, I'll wipe off any glue I had on there. That's the beauty of the silicone mat. And then I'm just going to add this onto my paper like so. Okay, now I've got that one done. Now we're going to move to these. And I'll show you how to put these together. So I'm going to take the detailed image of the base of the flower. Put just a little bit of liquid glue. Again, I don't really care if it goes all the way to the tips. And I'm just going to put this in here and line up those edges. So this edge will line up and these two edges will line up and these two edges will line up. And that's how you know you've got it in the right spot. 
Okay. Next, I'm going to put my helicopter wings together. So we've got those. And then you can either add this to the back or you can add it to the front. Okay. I personally liked it on the front. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not sure there's a right or wrong way. But I found it easier to line it up if I did it this way. Okay, and then I'm going to build my bud again. Tweezers are really helpful with this project. Of course, you maybe wouldn't need that if you used adhesive sheet. I still couldn't put them together without it, so I find I just don't work without my tweezers. All right, so now I've got that, and now I'm going to set this, and this one, I'm going to put this one like this. Okay, so again, I'm going to get a glue dot. And Stampin' Dimensional. And then I'm going to add this. Let's see, I want this to go like this. I'm just going to put that in there like that. All right, so now we have our flowers all built. Now let's bring in our stems again because we need to put these on stems. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to put one, oh, this one I want this way. So I'm going to put the left facing stem on here and these are going to be quite a bit shorter. So I'm just going to put my glue up here. And put those together like so. And then I can add my flower to my stem and then I'm going to repeat that over here. I'm going to want this one to be a little bit taller. So put these ones together. Like so. Okay. Put a little glue on my flower stem, and then I'm going to grab that. Oops. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I'm going to put this on here like so. All right, and these are now ready to add to our project. And you're probably wondering why I haven't put that on my card base, but we're going to wrap a, uh, wrap a little bit of ribbon around there and I need to know where to put that. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put this down here like this. And again, I better grab that silicone mat, rub off any glue that I've got on there previously. And we're going to just glue this down. Okay, now if you were to use regular cardstock, your daffodils would be a little bit sturdier. But I really liked the way the designer series paper looked. 
I thought it gave it quite a bit of character. Okay. Let's go ahead and flip that over. I want that to stand up just a little bit higher. Okay. Now we've got all of those. And then I'm going to take a pair of scissors and flip this over and get rid of any excess. Whoops. Need to press that down a little bit more. I'll hold it for just a second so it doesn't come back up. Okay. Now, if you have any end pieces that are sticking up that you don't like, just put a little bit of liquid glue at the base. Be careful not to actually bend it and set that down. Okay, now ahead of time, I stamped May Things Grow All Year Long on a piece of with, uh, basic white, and I used the detailed, or the tailored tag punch to punch it out. Okay, while I was at that, I punched another one in a bumblebee. Okay, because I liked how the bumblebee looked with the daffodils. I'm going to take this tailor tag and I'm going to cut this right down the middle, like so. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue here. And I'm going to add my sentiment. Which this sentiment comes from Dragonfly Garden. Okay, so it's a sentiment that's right there. I really liked that. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make sure that my edges line up over here and that looks good. And then I'm going to add some glue here. And again, I'm going to look to make sure that my margins are about the same top and bottom lining up my side edges. And now I've extended my die cut to make it look like it has a border. Okay. This is going to get mini dimensionals. And first before I can do that, well, I'm gonna put my dimensionals on. I'm gonna put them um, on these four edges. Here. And I'm using the minis and strategically putting them there because I'm going to straddle my stems. And I'm trying not to add extra bulk. Plus, I'm going to put ribbon behind here. So I want to leave my center open for the ribbon. Okay, so I've got a piece of evening evergreen which is probably five or six inches and I'm going to lay this along here and then I'm going to lay my sentiment on here just to see where I want to place that and that looks good to me so I'm going to grab a hold of that and I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to grab some tape. And tape that down. 
Now you could use some um, stamp and seal, but this is fast and easy, so I'm just going to do that. Okay. Now this is ready for our card base, and I can go ahead and glue this step. But I'm not going to use liquid glue because this um, die has stitching holes in it, and I don't want my glue everywhere. So I'm going to give it some extra stamp and seal. I'm going to make sure that I go all the way around the edges. which is way more stamp and seal than I usually use. But I wanna make sure that those edges all sit down nice and tight. And I'm gonna put that on my card here. Okay. I've got just a little bit of excess glue here. Let me get that off. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to add a little zipper on there. Let me clean off my adhesive there all right that's much better and then i can remove my backings and line that up center the edges on my ribbon and set that down. And for the finishing touch, I'm going to take another one of those bumblebees and a glue dot. And I'm going to put that right there. Okay. And then we're going to grab the Wink of Stella. And add a little wink. To our flower centers. Might need to get out a new one soon. This one's feeling a little empty. Okay, now that flower is not feeling like it's secure enough to me. So I'm going to take and put just a little bit more glue underneath it and give it a good press. All right, so there's the front of our card. And then for the inside, I've taken the fancy knot stamp along with those butterflies and I took happy birthday from Special Moments, the celebration set. And I put that in there. And I'm gonna add this to the inside of my card. Okay, so we've got that. And here is the uh, coordinating envelope. I used that same stamp from the inside here. And then I threw out, I threw along those speckled stamps along the edge of the envelope flap. Okay, so I hope you guys like that card. 
Now I just want to show you another card that I made um, using those same daffodil uh, dies. And this card, I used the Dragonfly Garden stamp set uh, stamp in the background. I used the to make a like a little meadow. This is a this base is a little bit smaller. This is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. Put flirty flamingo for my piece here, and to create my daffodils and my leaves. I inked them. I used my ink blending brushes and I used shimmery white cardstock and just went over the top of those. Uh, I started, I used the Daffodil Delight and I used um, Pear Pizzazz on the leaves. But the reason why you see the depth in the color there is I did light, I did a real light handed touch on the layer, on the layer pieces, the base pieces, and then I used a heavier hand on the detailed pieces and I got that. And then this is what the bud looks like when you put it together. Okay, so I hope you like that card. And again, that um, envelope looks just like, like the envelope that I made for this card. Okay, so that gives you those two cards. Now, I'm not gonna make the next card, I'm just gonna show it to you um, on what you could do if you don't have the daffodils and just have the paper. So here's a little card I put together. This uses mint macaron and a four by five and a quarter piece of the daffodil afternoon paper. I cut a rectangle from very vanilla and this uh, pale papaya this is from the beautiful shapes dies and then this little adorable kangaroo comes from the um count on me stamp set and i had that out to show you but I'm not sure where I've set it now. I thought they had them all in the, oh, there it is right there, right where it's supposed to be in the tub. So it counts from the count on me. And then on the inside, I cut a larger rectangle. This is the rectangle that's right at three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. It's just a hair bigger. Um, Cause I actually cut this out of a piece of three and five eighths by four and seven eighths inch paper. And then I stamped the bear and I used that daffodil afternoon paper to make his little tunic. And I want to show you how to do that in case you don't know. And I also want to point out that I colored these, I colored this bear with the new natural tones collection. This bear is colored in SU 400 and I colored the kangaroo in SU 300 and his belly and ears are in SU 1000. Okay, so that makes a cute little card just doing that. But let me show you how to do the bear. So you just take and stamp your bear on a piece of the um, daffodil afternoon paper. And then you can use a Stampin' Write marker or any pigment marker that you have. I'm, I'm using a fine tip pen. And what you want to do is you want to go from, you want to take your pen and you want to look at the base of his feet here where this little um, curve is. And just extend that across. And then you're going to do the same on this side. Okay, so that gives you his pant legs. And for his top, I take and add just a little bit of a curve there. And then I'm going to take from the bottom of his arm here, and I'm just going to bring that up like so. 
I'm going to start over here on the left from the tip of his arm. And I'm going to bring that in a little bit. And then I'm just going to put a curve in here and connect those two. Okay. And then when I hand cut this, which I would do right on the line, I don't want to leave a, an outline here. When I cut this, I'm going to cut off his arm because I don't need that part. Cut over on my overall strap. Cut around to the arm and I'm going to take the arm off again. Okay, and then I've got a little pair of overalls to put on my little bear. And I just glue that down with liquid glue. And, and there you have it. Okay, I used the stripy piece. I really liked that. <laughs> Thought that turned out really cute and it goes really nicely with that paper. All right. So my last project that I did was to make a little treat box and I, I used the beautiful shapes dies again and I stamped just a little high for me and this comes from that uh, special moment celebration stamp set. Again, I did the kangaroo and I used the same color marker. This time I used polished pink in the center. This piece is a piece of three and a half or six and a half inch paper scored at two and three quarters and three and three quarters and after it scored then I used the delightful tag topper punch to cut the top and this is it just has a little treat box that I this is the largest of the stitch scallop dies I saw this um, Meg Loven from Loven Stamps made this little box. Um, and I used mint macaron and then I ran mine through that stitched greenery to give it a little bit of texture. And then you can just slide this in and out of the little treat pouch. Okay, but it uses just a small piece of that paper. You can get a whole lot of those out of a sheet of the 12 by 12. And um, there we are. And then this one uses the retired Fable Friends. I thought it was just adorable. I tried to find images that we had that had the little daisies in them so they would match the paper. All right. So I hope you love all those projects. Let me bring those back in for you. And these are the cards that we've made with that set. A lot of them. I told you, I got, I got a little carried away here. Let's see if we can even get it all in here. All right. Thank you guys. I am so glad you love all that. Thanks for the hearts, the thumbs up. Oh, Tracy, thank you so much, you guys. I hope everybody has a wonderful night and a wonderful week. And I will see you back here next Tuesday night for another Tuesday Night Live. Good night, everybody.